Good morning, everyone. Before we begin, I'm just going to quickly call a local Subaru dealer. I'm curious what they charge for this kind of job because it is labor intensive. So let's just quickly find out and then uh, we'll get right to it. Good afternoon, service. Great speaking. Hi, right, Greg. Just a general question. Uh, I have a 2010 Preza non turbo. Okay. And I just realized in the maintenance booklet, it states to replace the fuel filter every 60,000 miles. There's no fuel filter. That's a very good question. There's no fuel filter in that car. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. That's it, so I don't have to worry about it then. It's actually inside of the fuel pump. Gotcha, it's gotcha. It's only service if you need a fuel pump or anything. I see. Okay, well, thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. So that's pretty interesting. Even though it's listed in the maintenance booklet to replace every 60,000 miles, they recommend, in this case, not to even replace unless you're doing a fuel pump. Uh, I'm going to do the replacement anyway because it is listed in that maintenance booklet that comes from the factory but also secondly if you go to Subaru.com you click on parts and you'll see what's recommended at 15,000, 30,000, 45,000 so on and so forth and when you click on the 60,000 mile mark two of those items that they recommend on replacing is the fuel filter and the gasket of where the fuel filter uh, the fuel pump meets the vehicle so I'm going to do the replacement anyway. Uh, that being said, after watching this video, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, it's your prerogative. It's your vehicle. Do whatever you want. But at least this uh, video will show you what's involved if you do want to replace the fuel filter. It's labor intensive, but um, at least you get to see what's going on. So let's begin. Now the first step is we need to release the fuel pressure in the system. To do that you have a cover here. This is the main fuse box and you have a bunch of different fuses and it tells you various things but what we're interested here is the fuel pump. It happens to be a 15 amp fuse. There's a little holder. Place it around the fuse and there you go. So now we'll crank the car. It'll probably start and then it'll die off crank it a few more times and that will release all of the fuel pressure in the system. And here's just a close-up showing where that fuse is located, right here. Okay, here we go. Then crank it just for a few more seconds. And that's it. Step, we need to remove the rear seat, but there's a satellite sensor for the airbag system. So what you want to do is disconnect the negative terminal to the battery and then wait at least 20 seconds. I'll probably wait a few more minutes beyond that. But just disconnect the negative uh, terminal to the battery, wait a minute or so, and then go ahead and we'll remove the rear seat of the vehicle. Now the rear cushion has two hooks, one right here on the driver's side, there's another one on the passenger side. Let me see if I can get in here so you guys can see this. You gotta sort of, actually let me go from another angle. So this is the rear driver's side cushion right here on this part of the seat. You have to pull up, let me see if I can see, so you guys can see this, it's sort of hard, I'm not sure if you can see this, but you'll see a white clamp. Right in front of that white clamp is a hook. You just press it open like that. Let me just show you what it looks like here. So this is where that hook is located and right here. Just push forward toward the front of the vehicle. We'll do the same thing on the passenger side. Okay, same on this side. Okay, and then right in the center of the hook you just press up and that's it. Let's pull the seat right out. This happens to be the rear passenger side of the vehicle. We have four Phillips side screws that we need to remove. Also, before you do this job, if you have more than two thirds of fuel in the tank, you either want to just drive it off or drain it because if you have more than two thirds, you're going to make a mess. Okay, here we go. Then you have a grommet right here. Make sure it's clean. I'm gonna push this down. Okay. 
Okay, push the grommet down, this comes out. Okay. So now we need to disconnect the fuel pump power adapter here, the harness. There we go. There's a tab right here. Just press it down with your thumb and pull up. So what I've done is just remove this backing, the foam backing, just so we have a better view. Also cleaned up the top of the fuel pump assembly before we pull this out. But very quickly, right here you have two fuel lines. To remove these, you need a special tool. I'll include the part number in the description box below. It's around $20, this tool. Uh, maybe if you have a buddy, maybe he has one lying around by chance. But uh, So we'll place the tool around the fuel line. It's a little funky to deal with. Okay, and now we're going to press in. There we go. Okay. So I just placed that fuel tube. Let me grab some paper towels. What I've done off camera is I grabbed an extra 5 16 of an inch fuel hose, placed it over the end coming, this nipple coming out of the fuel pump, and I have a bolt on the opposite end. This stops the fuel flow because the fuel just keeps on leaking out. It doesn't want to stop. And then you have the quick connector right here. What I've done is I've, if once this points down, the fuel just, again, just wants to come out. So I have it bungee cord so it's facing an upward projection but also I placed an ear plug in here just again it just the fuel just doesn't want to stop coming out and Subaru recommends that you don't do this unless the fuel uh, tank is two-thirds or less I have a quarter of a tank and the fuel just it just keeps on coming out so you really again you got to do this outside because it absolutely reeks you do this in your garage you're gonna stink up the whole house so we'll do this other connector and then we have eight bolts and then we'll pull the fuel pump right from the vehicle. Just have some paper towels ready to pick up this fuel because it will come out, unfortunately. Grab an extra fuel line, like so. There we go. Okay. Got to put this in there. Not sure if it really helps, but this fuel just it just leaks out from everywhere, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to place a piece of tape over this and then we'll start by removing these bolts. Now we're going to remove the eight bolts holding the pump to the vehicle and we'll place it on the bench and replace the fuel filter. And this is an eight millimeter by the way or five sixteenths of an inch. cover to the side here. It is a little tricky to get this out. Gotta be a little patient, but there we go. All right. So now we have the fuel pump assembly on the bench. First step is we need to disconnect both connectors. There's a little tab right here. You just press it in, pull down from the body. You have another one right here. You press it in and pull it down from the body. If you need a little help, what I used is a flat, very small flathead screwdriver. And for the blue wire, it was a little difficult to remove. Let me put it back in here. So what I did is I just pressed on the inside and pressed down. And there you go. Now also on the bottom of this assembly, you have the fuel temperature sensor, which is right here. So we also need to remove that as well. So we're just going to remove this like so. And then right here is the fuel level sensor. So this keeps track of how much fuel is in the fuel tank. So this would be full and this would be empty. So to remove it, there's a little claw right here where my index finger is. You just press it in and then push up the entire, oh, the entire part here. So press it in, push up, and there you go. And then we're just going to remove this. 
and place it to the side. Okay, so we'll place this to the side. Now we have these four tabs holding this entire sub-assembly together. You have one, two, three, and four. You're going to cut these. You're going to cut them right in half because the new fuel filter has them built in. So just grab yourself a wire cutter and just be careful because you don't want to damage this assembly. You just want to cut these guys the best you can. Let me just move my hand so you guys can see this. There you go. So we'll do that on all four here. Two, that's three, this is four. Okay, let's lift them up. Let me just, I'm just gonna shear them right off. Okay, there we go. Now one thing to note, you have an O-ring in the sub-tank. This is the sub-tank right here. Just make sure that stays in place. Sometimes it will come off with the uh, fuel pump assembly, but that's, that's the correct location just in case if you find it and you're not exactly sure where it goes. So now we're going to take the fuel pump assembly, flip it upside down. As you can see, this is a lot of steps just to change a fuel filter. And the fact that they only give you 60,000 miles to do this is uh, pretty crummy. But right here you have a connector that you need to remove, and then you have another guy right here. The flip side of it, I don't know how much they go for, to be off the top of my head, but if you just buy a, a whole assembly, in other words, take out the old one, put in a new one, you may be better off in terms of saving time, but the fuel filter itself is around 70 bucks, just for the filter. You know, you do have that option as well. Okay, just disconnect that. You have another one right here. I'll come in for a zoom in a moment. There we go. So again, for this guy, you just pull back and push up with your thumb. That's how I did it. And for these guys, or this guy right here on the side, just push out to the side and push up. Okay, next step. Now right here, we need to press down the entire assembly, and there's a little C-clip do this gently right here you see this guy right here so let's push down the assembly grab a pair of pliers and there you go place that to the side so this you just have to be gentle with this is your ground wire right here so be real real gentle when you do this okay just be gentle Just to see what I'm doing here. Okay. Now done a moment. Okay. Okay, so now you have a connector. You have a connector right here. Just do your best that you can. Grab your thumb, press down, and just pull in the body here. Let me flip it around so I can see it. Okay, there we go. Let me just change my newspapers here because I'm starting to suffocate, so hold on a sec. Next step is removing the fuel pump from the fuel filter. Now to do that, you have two tabs. You have one right here and another one right there. Hold on. All right, right there. So right there and right there. To do that, grab yourself a, really you need two screwdrivers, wrap the ends with electrical tape, and right here you have a tab you're just going to push this in. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but right here, just push it in. If you look from the opposite end, it's pushing the bottom of this tab out. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that's what you need to do. So I'm going to grab another screwdriver here. I'm going to insert one here, insert one on the other side, and we'll be able to remove the pump from the filter. Once you get those two tabs pushed in, you just pull the motor right from the body. It is a little difficult, don't get me wrong, it took me a good maybe 10 minutes to do this off camera. But I just had two 
screwdrivers in those locations, wiggle it out, and you'd be in good shape. So as you can see, the old filter has three O-rings that we need to transfer over. You want to make sure that you cover these in gasoline. So we'll transfer that over, put the pump back in, and then reinstall the entire assembly. So I have a little tray here of gasoline. Go ahead and just insert the O-rings. Okay, so now we have the O-rings installed. And when you're ready to install the fuel pump, you have a little spacer right here. This part of the fuel pump will go into, let me grab a screwdriver, this O-ring right here. So this spacer goes here, and then the sides of the fuel pump, these guys right here, that's where they end up. So you just place it right down. You just flip it over, make sure it's okay. And then you're going to push down, and you'll hear it snap in like that. Make sure it's secure all the way. And then just double check by flipping it over. If you take a look, the tabs have in completely enclosed that connector. So we're in good shape, and we can move on to the next step. So now we have the other assembly here. We take the black wire and plug it into the pump. Okay, so now it's time to assemble both parts into one. So you have the opening on this side. This goes toward the opening wires. Right here is the opening that you need for the wires. And just take your time with this. Right here is the ground wire. Make sure it's on the inside of this metal rod and not the outside. And these two metal rods go on the outermost diameters. You can tell because there are six point stars on the inside. So just take your time with this. It's a little tedious. And just line everything up. Let me get this guy actually over here. Hold on. Okay. And you have the wires over here. Just route them. Make sure nothing is being stressed. This looks all to be okay. Now, now we need that E clip. As you press this down, right here you have that insert point for the E clip. Now, the thing about these E clips, make sure you have a good grip on them. Um, they use these a lot in RC cars. And I can't tell you how many times this thing used to bounce around if you don't have a good grip on it. So, insert it. There you go. Let up. Okay, next step. So now we need to attach the two fuel pipings, the black and the white connector, uh, to the assembly. Now one thing to note, earlier when we started to rebuild the filter, we transported the those three O-rings from the old filter to the new filter. Now one thing, it, just in case if you mix those up and you drop them, they are different diameter. Now the white connector uses an 8 millimeter o-ring and the black connector uses a 7 millimeter o-ring. Now if you mix those up, just size them next to each other. The bigger o-ring, which is 8 millimeters, that goes in this guy right here. Okay. Now I have to apologize, my camcorder battery just ran out at that moment, but I just simply attached the white connector and the black connector and that's it so now we need to attach this entire assembly to the sub connection now to do that taking a look at taking a look at this sub assembly right here is an o-ring i just removed it happens to be right here again this happens to be eight millimeters just douse that in gasoline which we'll do one more time and then right here in the bottom of the filter right here this is where the O-ring lands. So let me grab my gasoline here again. Okay. I'll place the O-ring over the end. Let me get this out of here so I don't suffocate. All right. Let me just line everything up. We're almost there. Fortunately, we're almost there. And then we just press this down. Actually, before I do that, I just want to make sure nothing is snagging here. Everything looks to be okay. Okay. So just press this down. 
you have one tab here, one tab there, one tab there. I think there were four, right? Yeah, the other one right there. So just press it down until everything snaps into place. Make sure everything is lined up with where it's supposed to be. Don't force anything. Because don't forget, once this is in, to take it back out, you have to cut these. And this filter is $70. So make sure everything is just right. And everything looks okay to me. So it's now or never. There's one. There's two, three. Okay. Everything is lined up. I just reconnected our connection there, the harness connector. And we just need to reinstall the uh, temperature sensor and the fuel level sensor. Okay, we just need to route the wires where they were before. Reinstall the temperature sensor on the bottom. And then you have the fuel level sensor that just clips on the bottom. Okay, go ahead and reinstall this guy. This goes, let's see, this way. So I'm just going to clean up these wires just a little bit more off camera. I just want them to line up evenly. And then uh, this will be ready to reinstall in the fuel tank. Before we reinstall the fuel pump assembly, take note that there is a gasket. It's a good idea to replace this gasket as well. We have the new Subaru part right here. Also take note of the indentations. You have one, two, a third one right down here. So just match it when you install the new gasket onto the material. So now we need to install the upper plate, and the upper plate coincides with those three tabs on the gasket. Now when you're ready to tighten down these bolts, you'll do so in a crisscross pattern. Also note that they're not very tight, around three to four foot-pounds, so don't over tighten them. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and reconnect the battery, reinstall the fuse for the fuel pump, crank it up, and we'll be in good shape. So moment of truth, let's make sure our fuel level works, which it does. Okay, here goes nothing. So that's it, we're in good shape.